In this video, I want to look at this repository on GitHub, which is a Windows inside Docker container repository. This is a very interesting thing, and I think you will learn a thing or two about, in general, about Linux and this one, because I have a few things to share. So what they're saying is that they are effectively running Windows inside a Docker container, which is a huge lie, by the way. So just as a spoiler alert, this does not run inside a Docker container. There are a lot of more things which are there. But anyway, let's take a look at what's going on. So it provides you an ISO downloader, it does a KVM acceleration, which should be in bold and with like, you know, H1 tag and so on, because it's very, very important point over here. And then you have a web-based viewer. So you have a Docker Compose, first of all, and then you have a Docker CLI also. And as you can see, this is supported on Linux. It's not supported on Linux via Docker Desktop. It's not supported on Mac OS. It's supported on Windows 11, but not on Windows 10. And then of course you have like the size information and all of that. So what, what is going on? What is happening over here? Well, in order to understand this, we have to understand a few important things. So you would have remembered from some of my past videos that providers like AWS, for example, if you are creating an AWS EC2 bare metal instance, right? Which is like, you know, 168 cores and you know, a lot of RAM and so on. Once you have an instance like this, what happens is that AWS doesn't give you this instance on your own, right? So this is like a huge CPU, a huge instance. What it will do is it will try to allocate different, different sizes of instance over there, which could be your M6A large or T2 micro or T3A small or all of these instances, right? And then this is, these are the instances which you get. So outside over here, this one is a bare metal, right? So this instance is bare metal and all of these instances over here, these instances are sort of virtual machines on top of the bare metal real machine, right? That's the that's why the name virtual machine. So the question is that how do you even do this? How do you even run something like this on a bare metal, right? What does it even mean? This basically means that this computer over here, one of the things which it means is that this computer over here is a computer which is running something known as a hypervisor. So this computer over here is running a hypervisor, this green one. So hypervisor is basically, think of it as a program. It could be a software, it could be a hardware level thing also, but mostly like you would be familiar with a software. So think of it as a program which allows you to run multiple virtual machines on a single physical host, right? So in reality, this is a single host. It would have certain disk attached to it. It would have certain memory attached to it, certain RAM, certain CPU core, but a hypervisor is a software, is a piece of software or hardware that allows your single host, physical host, to act as if there are multiple virtual machines over here, right? In terms of hypervisor also, there are two things which are there. So one kind of hypervisor is the one that runs on bare metal, which I just mentioned you, right, over here. The second kind of hypervisor is something that runs on software level. So bare metal is one and software level hypervisor is the other thing. So in case of software level thing, I mean, this could also be software by the way. So it's not just has to be like hardware itself, but this non bare metal, I would say, non bare metal. The best example of this would be VMware, right? If you have heard about VMware workstation, if you Google VMware workstation, you can see that if you download this, it itself says desktop hypervisor solution, right? So VMware workstation pro for example. So these sort of softwares, what they allow you to do is, you know, run a virtual machine inside your computer. So they are the non bare metal ones. And on the bare metal, there is a software, there is one thing known as KVM, kernel based virtualization technology, right? So just like VM is virtual machine, KVM is your kernel virtual machine. So it, what it does is that this is a bare metal technology, right? It literally turns your kernel into a hypervisor. So your Linux kernel, let's say if this machine, for example, had Ubuntu installed, Ubuntu or anything, CentOS, something like this. If you enable KVM on a machine with Linux kernel, basically, you can turn that machine from an actual computer, like if you have like an actual 64 core or 128, 196 core machine from an actual computer into a hypervisor. So now this can act as if like it has to share these resources with other virtual machines hosted on its system. So if you look into this blog post, uh, this GitHub repository, you will see that this is exactly what they are doing. So when they are mounting this device over here, you can see that they are mounting this dev KVM inside this container, right? So first thing first, they're doing that. Once you have mounted the KVM, kernel-based virtual machine, inside a container, 
and you're able to access it, you basically have access to the kernel directly, right? So how things work, if you know about this, this is like actually pretty funny because they show you Docker container, but they effectively are not using Docker for running windows in a way, right? This is just a fancy way of setting up scripts and setting up windows binaries, downloading all of that, and then using your Linux KVM, kernel-based virtual machine to actually run the thing, right? So let's say this is one of your components of inside your host, then you have an operating system, then you have something like Docker, which is running as one of the softwares. If you have Docker over here, this Docker has this container, right? So it has this one container, which, which is this specific container, this Docker slash Windows. So what you have effectively done is that you have given access of this container, you have given access of KVM layer to this container, right? So once you have given this access of KVM layer to this container, all it needs to do is just set up, is just set up anything and everything which is required for this Windows setup, right? And it can technically like operate outside of Docker's restrictions because this restriction is not really like, you know, there as such as of now because KVM can talk to your kernel directly and your kernel is the one that talks to your hardware directly, right? So your hardware, which is your disk or memory or actual CPU, like raw CPU hardware, like real hardware, this communication is established. KVM is able to establish this communication with the kernel directly and your container, this one specifically is able to establish this communication, right? With KVM directly. So that's what effectively ha is happening over here. Now, if you dig into this repository a little bit, and if you try to search for an issue for KVM, because you know, this doesn't work on Mac OS, by the way, because Mac OS does not expose this KVM under, you know, slash dev slash KVM. It's only there on the Linux machines. So if you look at this, and let me just search Mac OS, for example. So you see this issue that it doesn't work with Mac OS. So what you can do is disable KVM and just run it with QEMU, which is quick emulator, right? So it uses both. It uses KVM also, it uses quick emulator also. So if you look at this quick emulator, basically, what this is, is that it's a software level emulation of the architecture, right? So it can run operating system for any machine on any supported architecture. It run program for Linux and it can run KVM and Zen virtual machines with near native performance, right? So here for the native performance thing, it's not the quick emulator, which is able to deliver that results. It's the KVM thing. So what's happening over here is that when you're running actual windows, when you're running actual windows from this container, what's happening is that this windows is somewhere here, right? So you're running this windows over here, windows 11 or whatever. So when you're running Windows, for example, let's say if I start Windows inside this particular container, what I also want to do is I want to have my peripherals supported, right? I want my keyboard to work. So if I'm typing like letter H on my keyboard, it goes to the Windows process also. If I'm attaching a USB stick, if you would have seen if you have used VMware, if you attach a USB stick, it's, it should be also made available inside Windows 11 operating system alongside my Linux OS. So that emulation, that linking everything is done by this quick emulator, which is QEMU, right? And what this can do is that this can hypothetically run a full virtual machine on its own on software level. Now the problem with QEMU or quick emulator is that this, because this is software based, right? So let's say you want to run the windows on ARM, like, you know, let's assume that you're running Windows 11 as ARM and your your main operating system is x86. Or let's, let's just keep both of them x86 only, that's fine. So your main operating system is also x86. Now, because Quick Emulator is running as a software, it has to translate every single instruction, every single thing which your Windows 11 is doing and trying to make sense of like what it's trying to do, right? If you're clicking on a file explorer, double clicking, opening it, these are like instructions which needs to be translated on a software level. However, what Quick Emulator can do is that if you give it KVM, if you combine it with KVM, it can interact with KVM directly, right? So it can bypass the operating system, it can interact with KVM directly, which would speed up the process a lot. That is why if you see in this one, if you disable KVM, it would still work on Mac OS. You can still make it work, but the process is painfully slow because Macs are first of all cross 
not x86, right? So Mac itself is like, right, the M1 chips at least. So once you have this, then it's a major overhead because if you're running Windows 11, let's say it's in x86 mode, so not only like Quick Emulator has to provide all the emulation on software layer, it has to also translate the whole CPU instruction set from x86 to ARM so that it can be executed on the machine, right? Because at the end of the day, your main computer is the only computer that can execute. It can't just execute in the air, right? It needs a CPU to execute real commands. So if you don't have KVM, which in this case, Mac books don't have, the new one, M1 Macs don't have that, so you can't do that, right? I mean, you can do it, but it would be painfully slow. However, once you combine this with KVM, you get near native performance because your software emulation is also able to use hardware, real hardware support, right? So it can literally just instead of like, trying to make sense of it, what this statement would actually do, it can run it with KVM directly on the kernel, right? It can run that instruction directly. Now you might think that, hey, Mehul, why does it need to actually, you know, just talk to KVM? Why can't it just, let's say if this is also x86 and you are also like, let's say if not running it on M1, let's say on Linux machine on x86 itself, why can it not just talk to the operating system directly? Why does it need like KVM? as a thing, right? The reason it needs KVM is because it's, first of all, it's remember that it's emulating a virtual machine, right? It's not your typical software. This is a software which is on operating system itself, right? So it's emulating a virtual machine and it needs to process the commands. It needs to process the actual instruction set of this virtual machine, what it's trying to do. Now, if it tries to do it for operating on an operating system level, what it has to do is it has to intercept everything on its own software, right? Quick emulator has to make sure everything passes through its own software as an interceptor so that it can inspect what's going on and can change this thing. What KVM actually tries to do is that it accelerates that process by just bypassing the quick emulator software processes itself, right? So the emulation layer, this instruction set emulation layer, let's say, is fully bypassed, right? Once you have enabled KVM, that means it's really running on the real hardware. And then there are a few extensions and few capabilities which KVM uh, provides directly depending on if you have an Intel CPU, an AMD CPU. So this set, this emulation is really, really uh, slow if you do it on a software level. Plus, you cannot just bypass the, you know, the KVM directly and access kernel if you're thinking about this, because that's the whole point of having KVM, that somebody secured talks to kernel. Your operating system would not allow this connection where your software in the user space is able to talk to kernel directly. That's like a big no-no. That's a complete violation of trust. That's a complete, if that happens, you know, you, you'll have something like a crowd strike or something where the operating system crash and, you know, everything bad happens. So this, this cannot happen, right? Because if your software programs start to talk to kernel, they can just basically corrupt everything and they can just, you know, it can, it will be a huge chaos. So this this is a big no-no. This cannot happen. That's why you need an intermediary like KVM to be in the picture. And once KVM is there, it's enabled, your quick emulator is able to talk to KVM directly and it's able to run everything very smoothly. And again, just to clarify, KVM is able to run your bare metal. It's able to turn into your your bare metal into a hypervisor, right? A hypervisor is basically a software which allows you to run other VMs like this within your uh, you know, main computer. So these guys are doing nothing but exposing KVM inside a container, number one. And once they expose KVM, they use that KVM to simulate Windows, right? So they install everything inside a Windows. In, they do install everything inside a container, right? So you can see that there is no volume or anything mounted as such. They just need a KVM device. So they do install the whole thing inside a Docker container. But well, it has access to kernel, right? So it, it's, it's like sort of cheating because this process is not really sandboxed in a way, which you would probably expect if you're seeing like, oh, I'm using Docker. So everything is secure. Everything is sandboxed. No, nobody really would ever, ever, or you should never really give access to your KVM device to a Docker container. That's just a big no-no from the very start. But anyway, I hope you learned something new in this video. That is all for this one. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video very soon.